Hi, I'm Rich Foley. This is Book View Now. You're at the Miami Book Fair. It's 2015. This fair gets bigger and bigger every year. Um, hopefully you've been able to capture a little bit behind us all throughout the day. I'm here with Ridley Pearson, who so kindly agreed to be our guest host. We've trapped him here for the hour. <laughs> He's sticking with us. And we're now here with the number one New York Times bestselling, multiple, Melissa multiple, De La multiple, Cruz. Multiple, right. Week number one bestseller. Huge <laughs> book. <laughs> Melissa De La Cruz. The book is The Isle of the Lost. It's a Descendants novel. It's based on the really popular and successful Disney series on television. Um, on the Disney Channel, and uh, so cool that you're here. Yes. Thanks, with us. thanks for having me. It's great to oh, be here. Amazing. Great yeah. to see you, Ridley. When Hi. I first sat down with Melissa to talk about Isle of the Lost, at, it was at BookCon, I believe. Yes. Oh yeah. It had just creeped up. I think it was just out, and it was like um, day mm. one of the New York Times list. Yeah, I think, I think so. Like yeah. we had just published. Yeah. yeah, and we got to celebrate that you were yes. there, and like. It was multiple weeks later, I look and you're still up there, you're still cranking. <laughs> I know, it's, it's a little crazy. How does that feel? It feels, it's actually, I think it's more shock than anything, you know, because you always dream that the books will do really well, but, you know, usually they don't, <laughs> so it's like, oh, but when they actually come, dreams come true, it's kind of, you kind of can't process it. It's great. Yeah. It's actually, it's wonderful. You say that usually they don't, but for you, oftentimes they do. I mean, you've like, your books do so well and you Thank have such you. a huge fan base. Thank you. Um, I wanted to talk, look, you guys both write for Disney, and um, I think that you both incorporate Disney elements in your books right now. There's a really interesting alchemy here. Yeah. Um, but how has it been, because this is your first experience bringing those Disney mm -hmm. characters into a book. Mm -hmm. Ridley's been doing it for some time. What's that like to sort of go grab really well-known and beloved elements of a, of a world like Disney and to bring them into your own world? I think I was really scared uh, because the the pressure, and also I don't want to disappoint uh, not just Disney but myself and all the Disney fans out there who love these classic characters. So I really wanted to live up to the classic movies and to the new Disney Channel movie and kind of seamlessly kind of tie that old classic uh, franchise to the new one. So yeah. it, it took a while, yeah. <laughs> a lot of drafts. And you've been walking that path for a while, Ridley. I mean, was I it something you ever well, feel yeah. intimidated by? You know, I think whenever you're playing around with these iconic characters, it makes you a little nervous because yeah. everybody loves them so much. And I don't think either Melissa nor I are trying to put our own stamp on this. We're trying to treat them with reverence oh, and involve them in new way. And, you know, the yeah. idea of having descendants of these characters is brilliant. Right. We because we then you can that. stay a little farther away. Yeah. yeah. Bring us, bring us. You know, give us Melissa 1.0. How did you start all this? Because you've written so many different kind of books. You've done so much. And how did that lead up to the descendants and yeah, all of that? You know, it's funny because I wanted to do a new fairy tale series, and that was going to be my new idea. And uh, the head of Disney asked me to lunch and said, you know, we have this idea called Descendants, and it's Disney characters and they're the new generation of villains. And I said, oh my God, that's so funny. Here, I want to write a fairy tale book, and you're handing me the biggest fairy tale of, of all. all. Yeah. So, you know, it, it was just the perfect match. And the fact that it is a new generation, so they're not their parents, right. but they have aspects of their parents. So it does give you a little bit more freedom right. to play, definitely. Yep. And there's so many more villains. Yeah. We talked about in Ridley's mm -hmm. book, he goes back to the beginning of Disneyland before there was just an entire mm -hmm. universe yeah. of villains that have come yeah. in from that point to now, starting yeah, right. with, uh, I guess you go back to like uh, 101 Dalmatians or somewhere around yes, there. Right, far and fewer. I mean, they had done mm -hmm. Fantasia and they'd done a few mm -hmm. other things, but yeah. um, it's amazing when you look at how many brilliant stories they've brought us since 1955. Yeah, yeah. and so it's many incredible. brilliant baddies. Yeah, yeah. You know, that <laughs> They're you get the to most play fun. With. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you take those bad guys and figure out how to make their children and what characteristics to give them and when you wanted them to rebel or maybe not play that game, you know, like well, that's like a tough thing because you didn't want to yeah. just do carbon copies of the bad yeah. person adult. Yeah, you know, and they had to be relatable to 21st century kids, you know, so we wanted the kids to kind of uh, be like the kids are today. So with Maleficent, uh, you know, she's the biggest <laughs> bad of all time. I mean, what's her kid like? And, you know, she's a rebel. She's an artist. You know, she wears, like, distressed purple leather, <laughs> you know, and that, that was really fun. And, you know, Maleficent's kid is just as strong as she is, but, you know, but she's not all Maleficent, you know. She's got a little spark of something that's just her, that's Mal. And I think what we wanted to show was, you know, it didn't matter who your parents are, you can still be a good person, you know, even if you're 
mom is, you know, the uh, mistress of darkness. <laughs> yeah. You had a past of writing for style. Yes. And I heard you say distressed purple leather. Yes. So how <laughs> visual a writer are you? I, I think very Do you visual, see the cinematic. story and then describe it to us? Yes, and yeah. I start kind with of what the setting, to me too. right? Like, I like to see the atmosphere first, right. and I like the title. I'm, I'm very kind of hierarchical in that way. I like the title, the setting, the atmosphere, and then I go down into the characters. Who's going to populate my story? And I see what they're wearing and, you know, what their hair is And do you, <laughs> do you see um, villains as role players? Mm -hmm. Do you see them as... Uh, like fully fleshed out characters that are going to interact? What, what role do you give villains? Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely a big role player, you know, and definitely the story, why it appealed to me was because it's the story of the villains right. and what happens at the end. And what was funny during my research, watching the old movies, they were all killed off, you know. I had right. to bring them back to life, right. you know, because Maleficent right. gets killed with a right. sword, yeah. and you know, the evil queen falls off a cliff and is Did they give you? Did vultures. they leave that to you to figure out? Just yeah. so you can figure that out. Just yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I don't think they even realized that we had to branch it together. Yeah. You know, that there had to be a reason why they were all alive and on this island. Right. So, and then I said, you know, what's worse than death? Oh, having to be good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty How? rad island too. I mean, what yeah. an amazing yeah, yeah, yeah. like island of like. I, I, yeah, it's very Dickensian, yeah. you know, but a little bit of like you know, um, like the kind of shanties in um, Brazil. Yeah. You know, I, I talked to the our art designer, production designer, and he kind of told me what he was thinking. So we kind of uh, he, he was like, "This is what I can do because this is our budget." But in your book, you can like yeah, make it bigger. Have fun. Yeah. yeah. And creating the stories and the conflicts, and how much of that is off of things that have happened in your life? How much of it is off of a film you've seen or something you've read? Where's that kind of inspiration come from? I think it mostly comes from my life, you know, because I definitely have to feel like those characters are me, yeah. right, in order to have any life and any yeah. soul. So, you know, what I really related to the kids was the whole uh, idea of disappointing your parents and how mm. hard that is for a kid. Because mm. they have to disappoint their parents to be good. Like, their parents want them to be bad, want them to steal, want them to curse <laughs> people. You know, and they're like, oh, I don't want to do that. But then you're picking the right thing, but it's the wrong thing for your mom and your mom or dad. Right. And, you know, that's a big conflict. So I, I kind of really related to that. Although my parents wanted me to be a good kid. But I love that you turned it on its head. You know, you, know, you didn't want to disappoint your parents by being too good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's completely what Yeah, you're rebelling you're, by being fun. good. <laughs> yeah. You had to get some bonus points. Um, you know, mom is always mom at home, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, mm -hmm. But some bonus points for writing a cool Disney story with the kids in the neighborhood, I'm guessing. Uh, that was the most fun part because my daughter is nine years old and she's a big Disney Channel fan. And part of why I did this job was also because I thought she would finally think I was cool mom. Yeah, exactly. You know, so I had it for like one second, mm -hmm. and then I'm mom again. Yeah, like who cares? <laughs> yeah. But you got to take, you got to go into the park after hours. Yes, many, many times. Kids? Amazing. Not with my kids. Okay. No, no, they oh. can't. They can't see all the bells and whistles there back you go. there. But I'm allowed to write about them then. That's what's mm -hmm. fun. And so a lot of adults, because there's so many adult Disney fanatics. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they want to know what it's like backstage. You know, yeah. they want to they wanna be able to imagine what would Maleficent's kid be like. Yeah. Right. I mean, there's no way you're not going to sell 10 billion copies <laughs> of the book. That's the amazing thing Because we're about... all so curious, like, what yeah. did Melissa come up with? Yeah. Exactly. The, the, Disney, the Disney world, I was going to call it empire. That seems like a heavy-handed word. Mm. The Disney universe oh, yeah. is really massive. But there's yeah. people crawling into all the corners oh, yeah. and you can sort of set up shop in one of them yeah. and have a pretty good audience yeah. for what yeah. you do. No, it's nice and it, it, especially when you go to D23 which is a big right. Disney con. That's so fun. And to meet those really hardcore fans, right? It, it's, it's kind of, it's cool. It's yeah. an honor. Yeah, that's awesome. awesome. So we, we have to keep moving on but like yeah, sure. you're in this world now, you're in that Disney place but you have other books too. Yes. So how do you move in and out of those worlds? What's the next thing? And, where, and, and like, when do you know when to leave this behind and come back to it? I, I think it's uh, writing a lot of books is how I deal with writer's block. 
Mm. Like if I'm blocked on one book, I'll just start another one. Yeah. And then I go back and forth. And it's also how I deal with deadlines because I always work on the book that's not due. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> there you go. Because it's more fascinating. And it no really pressure. is. And there's no pressure. It's that's not right. due yet. I'll work on that one. Well, see, that's the so are the rumors about another Descendants anything true or are you not allowed to say? Uh, I've heard can, rumor. Yes. No, there is going to be another movie. We announced that. Fabulous. And it's coming out not next year but the year after. Uh -huh. But the, the sequel to The Isle of the Lost Return to the Isle of Loss is coming out next year. And it's you. Wow. And that's for me. That's yes. awesome. That's so great. Well, the first one has been so phenomenally successful. We know the second one will be as well. I hope so. But I'm also <laughs> curious about those other ideas percolating in your brain, that you, those ones that don't have a deadline right now. Oh, yeah. I want to get in there and find oh, out what nice. those are about. But we are with Melissa de la Cruz. Thank you so much for joining you, us Rick. today. And Ridley, you're sticking around. Okay. But we're going to let Melissa go. And um, can't wait for the next next one. And, and uh, Next time, um, you know, those kind of happy moments come with the kids and you got the Disney mom <laughs> yeah. going, just like, I'm going to try that. Like, I, <laughs> let me come along and just see the Disney thing. To the VIP tour. That's, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank being you, here. Rich. It's really wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.